Hello friends, I'm here again. It's starting to be a bit of a habit. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit so you can see the top of my head. Um, I'm just going to wait to see if a few people show up and then I'm going to start talking a little bit about fear. Uh, my name is Sarah Seidelman and I am a physician turned shamanic healer. So about seven, eight years ago, my left, my life kind of took a left turn and I realized that I was no longer in the position I was supposed to be in, although I had no idea what the position was that I was supposed to be going into. <laughs> so there was a period of confusion there, but there's no confusion today. Today I'm here and I want to talk about fear because, um, Fear seems to be sort of one of the number one things that holds all of us back. Hey Alyssa, welcome. Thanks for watching. Um, fear seems to be one of the main things that holds us back. I know that has been the case for me. Um, and fear is always a good sign too because usually it means that you're pushing your edges, you're going out and trying something maybe um, new, maybe you're creating something new with your entrepreneurial business, or maybe you are trying something new in your intimate relationships, trying to put yourself out there in a new, more vulnerable way. But fear will often pop up when we're trying something new um, or doing something um, that's going to be helping us. And so we need to find ways to um, work with that. and. This spring, I realized that I had had a, something happen to me. I'll be I'll be a bit vague about that, but that brought up a lot of fear about um, just my own path and the things that I wanted to do. And suddenly, I was finding myself feeling a little bit stuck. And so, I had the great opportunity to go to Peru this spring and spend time with a beautiful shaman there, whose name is Lusma. And if you want to know more about um, the place that I went to in Peru or the name of that person or contact information, um, I will share in, in the um, comments, I'll put a link to their organization. So you guys, if you're interested in setting up your own trip, you can do that. Um, but my primary thing when I went to Peru was I really wanted to be done with fear. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the ultimate? Wouldn't that be fantastic if you could sort of like push a mag magic button and not be afraid to do the things that you're longing to do? And I'm not talking about fear like when you're walking down a dark alley and you get a creepy feeling that you you know something bad is about to happen. That that's a kind of fear that maybe you should you know uh, that you should pay attention. There are certain fears that are actually real legitimate fears that are you know to protect us from our cell, our physical bodies. But most of the fears I would I would uh, I would argue that we experience now in the reality that we live in now aren't actual physical harm, you know, true legitimate fears about our body, you know, our own physical safety. Um, they tend to be more um, fears that come from stories that we've built up in our head about what's going to happen when we do the thing that we want to do um, or that we're being called to do. So anyway, I decided that I was going to go to Peru and what was going to be my intention with this to work with this beautiful shaman. And I decided that it was time, it was high time that I got rid of all my fear because wouldn't that be a good idea? <laughs> and so as we traveled, we flew into Peru and we, um, as we traveled to her little town where she lives, we stopped at this place and looked at the mountain and we picked up these, um, sacred coca leaves that somebody gave to us. And, you know, we were basically instructed that, in order to have our to to begin this process, we were gonna put our prayers into this coca leaf because coca is a thought to be a sacred messenger. These leaves, and so that when you blow your intention into the leaf, you know that the spirits or the universe or God or the Creator, who however you want to you know talk about it, will hear these prayers. And so mine was, I want to be rid of fear, and so. We ended up, during the time that we spent there, we had a ceremony, a medicine ceremony. Um, and if many of you may have heard about um, ayahuasca or other sacred plants that seem to be making a resurgence across the world right now, um, Peru is one of the places where those traditions are very much alive. And um, the tradition that this particular shaman we were working with in one ceremony was San Pedro, which is a, a cactus. Again, a, a sacred plant that, um, has become, you know, was a wise, was and is a wise teacher for many people. And if you've ever stood by a, you know, a 300 year old oak tree, um, you've probably felt some of the wisdom that the plants and trees share with us, you know, um, 
without ingesting anything. <laughs> um, but so anyway, we went into this beautiful ceremony uh, in a space out in the mountains in the wild. So it was very quiet, very peaceful. And we had a ceremony, was, a ceremonial space was opened, and then we ingested this medicine that was provided by the shaman. And I got a lot of messages and I wrote all about my crazy experience. Um, a lot of unexpected messages, <laughs> but some of them which made me laugh. And I wrote more about that experience in an article that I just published at Elephant Journal. So if you want to read more about the whole experience, um, I'll post a link to that too. But at the end of the day, I was sitting staring at this incredible mountain. And I'm sure many of you know the power of being around beautiful mountains. Like there's just nothing like it. And I've always admired mountains, but I felt like I really had never truly experienced the, the spirit of a mountain until that day. And so under the influence of this, this medicine, which had been sort of talking to me almost like a loving grandfather all day, which sounds kind of odd, but that's all I can really explain to you. But as I was, I'd gotten lots of information and lots of um, insights and lots of healing. Hi, Tracy and hi, Christine. Welcome. Um, and as I was staring, though, the, the day was starting to come to an end and I was getting a little bit worried because I was like, but wait a minute, we haven't covered how I'm going to get rid of all this fear that I have, you know, about things I want to do and things I have to say and things I kind of feel like I'm being called to do that feel a little scary. What am I supposed to do about that? And as I was staring at this mountain, which was incredible, and as I was looking at the mountain, it was kind of almost like you could see um, the faces of warriors in it, and part of the mountain almost looked like a dragon. And I'm sure if you've ever, you know, if you've ever stared in nature long enough, you know, sometimes different images will pop out of the, the rocks and the stones, you know, that they truly have this alive component. And it was like that. And I said, <laughs> kind of in a panic, I spoke to the medicine, to this grandfather that had been kind of accompanying me all day. I'm like, but wait, wait, before, before we go today, what about my fear? And as I was staring at the mountain, this incredible mountain, the response came back loud and clear. Sarah, instead of being afraid, why don't you just be in awe? And I was like, whoa. And I thought, what an amazing perspective. Yeah, here I am, this sort of small being on this giant planet with all this incredible um well this incredible mountain that was in front of me that was clearly something much larger than myself something much older than myself something potentially much white much wiser than myself and to be in awe i was clearly in awe in that moment so it really struck me as a beautiful teaching that i could share with other people and then i thought well what if you so taking that back as sort of a practical tool or a pragmatic tool, every time um, I'm afraid, one of the things I've been playing with is going out and spending time in nature or simply looking around my, my near environment if, if there's no time to get into nature and finding something that I am in awe of and focusing on that. Um, so maybe it's like the spontaneity and beauty of one of my kids smiles or maybe it's like how the creek behind our house just keeps flowing and flowing and flowing and sometimes it's just so amazing it's like you know you forget how incredible life is um and so that's my invitation would be you know if you're experiencing fear about anything instead of you know fear try pivoting and practicing or playing with being in awe and finding something in your life that you are in awe because I think and you're in awe of because I think um, and that brings to mind things like you know prayer meditation you know connecting kind of with the oneness um, because it's from that state of that state of mind I think that we realize we're capable of so much more and um, so that's kind of the message for today. And yeah, if you want to know more about plant medicine or if anybody has any questions, I'm going to see if I can, if anybody has any questions about that retreat or anything about it, I'd be happy to answer those. Um, and as I said, I'll post a, call, a link that has a link to the article where I go a little bit more into detail about that experience in Peru. But um, working with those... Um, with the plants, just as uh, I encourage people to, you know, work with animal spirits and to spend time in nature, because I think 
uh, nature has so much to teach us and so much we can learn um, about accepting ourselves, about the way to do things, about how to let things fall apart when they're meant to or how to grow new things when we need to and what that looks like. Um, so thanks for watching and um, yeah, I would love it if you would, an elephant journal would love it if you share that article, if it inspires you or send it to a friend who you know is maybe interested in plant medicine or going to go to an ayahuasca retreat or a San Pedro ceremony or something like that. Um, I think there are powerful lessons to be learned from the plants. Um, and there are also powerful, you know, lessons to be learned simply from, you know, using something simple like a drum um, and learning how to shamanic journey. So if you want to know more about that, you can go to my website, followyourfeelgood.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you have a beautiful weekend. Bye.